G'day guys, welcome back to my channel, my name is Wildcard. Thank you for being here and watching my content. As always, it is my pleasure and privilege to entertain you as we talk about the greatest game in the world, rugby. And the uh, bronze medal participation trophy medal ceremony game this weekend is happening between England and Argentina. And uh, yes, this will be a rematch for the pool game, uh, the opening pool game in Pool D uh, between the two sides where England dominated Argentina in that one-sided Masterclass performance by George Ford, uh, where England had a red card to Tom Curry for the majority of the match as well, and uh, Argentina was basically completely shut out of the game. And uh, yeah, this will be a rematch of Argentina to try to redeem themselves, and uh, this will be once again another opportunity for Steve Bothwick to prove that hey, Owen Farrell will be able to do better than George Ford in that opening match, and uh, has once again opted for open foul to start ahead of George Ford. Now, uh, a lot of you guys have been saying that I've been very negative about England, and uh, yeah, I am going to, you know, tell you why, okay, right here. Because I do think that England is probably the most mismanaged rugby team in the world right now. England should be a top five uh, test team in the world, and they're nowhere near it because of mismanagement. And yes, it is... Owen Farrell, the way he manages the players around him on the field. And yes, it is a symptom that is left over by, by Eddie Jones. Now, let me tell you, let me tell you, uh, let me tell you the, 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 let me tell you what I mean, okay? The, the England team has this plaguing issue where when they get ahead in the game, right? Which speaks a lot of volume of, you know, uh, volumes about how talented this team actually is. They are consistently able to get themselves ahead against world-class oppositions, especially early in the game, and only to throw away the lead in the last 20, 30 minutes or so of the game, and then to lose in that last, you know, last bit of the game. And why, why that's the case, you might be asking. Is it because of fitness issue? No. It's because the way that Eddie Jones has taught the England team, has taught Owen Farrell, is that when you're winning, you want to manage the game. Instead of playing rugby, you want to play a game of management. You want to manage the game, and you want to manage the game clock. So England, every time they take the lead, instead of just continue to play rugby, something that they've been successful of, you know, getting themselves the lead in the first place, right? They decide to stop playing rugby and play the game clock. And that has consistently plagued England and cost England games in the last probably 24 months, if not longer. And that is why I am, I, I'm so negative about this England team. Because I think the talent that is, that is in this team truly should have played better. And truly, it's just disgraceful the way they, they try to play the game clock Every time they take the lead, because Owen Farrell thinks that's how you how you're supposed to win the game. And believe it or not, the game against Argentina, England did not do that because Owen Farrell was not on the field, and England played all the way till the end, regardless of the lead they had. They did not try to play the game clock. They tried to play the scoreboard all the way to the end, and that was a perfect. Absolute one-sided domination over Argentina in that opening match. So I'll show you some evidence just to, 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 so you can see what I'm talking about. The first, firstly, just to show you how much talent England actually got, they scored, what, three tries against the All Blacks to draw the game. You know, when they try to play, they definitely have the, 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 the talent to do so, right? But instead, uh, last week's performance against, against the Springboks 53 minutes into the game, 15 points to six lead England. To, to, to lead the Springboks, the defending world champions, 15 points to six speaks volume about the talent that you have on the field. Like that is not easy. That is not something that any team can do to, 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 to put the Springboks in this position. It was a very good strategy. It was very well managed. Uh, the high balls were contested well. All the key areas that England wanted to win in this match they were winning it to get themselves in this position, 15 points to six. And it is precisely at this point, 
Owen Farrell kicked drop goal for 40 meters out when it was completely unnecessary. And you know why? Because Owen Farrell realized that's big enough in the lead, guys. Let's just manage the game, try to run the clock down, and that's enough. Because kicking the drop goal here means that Springboks had to score twice. A try and a conversion. Have to score twice somehow to win the game. And Owen Farrell deemed that was enough. And that is the mentality plagues England again and again and again and again. Especially when Owen Farrell is on the field. And we look at this another one. This is another typical example. 54 minutes. And you'll find that the time is very similar as well. 54 minutes. England was leading 24 points to 10 over Fiji. Two converted tries. And only to once again, to start to, hey, let's just manage conceding two converted tries in less than 10 minutes, only for themselves to luckily pull themselves through with late penalties against the Fijians. Again, they try to manage. They, they did, you know, for this time, the management... The managing of the game clock actually worked for them, all right? They were able to succeed this time. 30 points to 24. Two late penalties got themselves ahead, all right? So that's, that's England once again. I mean, I don't, I don't know how, how, why didn't you play, you know, anyway. Next one, uh, this was England against Argentina in the opening match. We'll talk about this a bit later because this is actually one they play really well. And this one again, against Scotland. 49, just around the 50 meter mark. We're getting a bit of a bit of a bit of a picture. England was leading 20 points to 12. And again, to, to go up against Scotland, the, one of the best Scottish teams ever, 20 points to 12 leading them around the 50 meter mark is takes a good team to do that. And again, England decided to start managing the game, right? Manage the clock. Uh, Scotland was making a comeback, got really close, 19 points to 20. You know what England did, did? Instead of trying to do what was successful, playing the game of rugby, they decided to manage the game. And like literally the one opportunity they had inside the Scottish half after is, is to take the three points. And guess what? That wasn't enough to stifle the momentum. Scotland ended up winning the game at Twickenham, 29 points to 23. So, what was interesting about this performance when Owen Farrell was not on the field, as you can see, England did not stop trying to score, did not score, stop scoring at the 50 meter mark. They did not take the foot off the gas, like when Owen Farrell is on the field. And George Ford played the game, led the team. For the entire duration of the match. Well, almost, if you can say that, you know, they got a late consolation try, 80th minutes. But for the full 80 minutes, England played. They did not allow Argentina to come back. They did not give them a sniff. And this was with the red card to Tom Curry for the majority of the game. And that is once again, let's get this up again. Once again, showed. When England play Japan, let's have a see, let's have a look at this one. When England play Japan, where once again, George Ford was leading the team, played all the way till the 80th minute mark. There was no letting off, right? 57 minutes, let's just start managing the game. Yeah, no. They pushed all the way through to the 80 minute mark and finished the game with a convincing win over Japan in a game where Japan uh, was hanging in there pretty close throughout the game. And this weekend against Argentina, England, once again, their biggest enemy is themselves. Is Owen Farrell going to start managing the clock 50 minutes into the game? If he does, I do think that Argentina has opportunity to win this match. Yeah, so, yeah, let's have a look at the uh, the referee for this match. Uh, is going to be Mr. Nick Barry. Now, Nick Barry, based on his performances in the pool stage, I am expecting to see yellow cards. 
there's no doubt about it. There will be yellow cards. Uh, Nick Barry seems to to be one of the one of the his his approach in the in the in the in the pool stage was that if anything meets the yellow card threshold, immediately on report and let the bunker deal with it. That's his mentality. So he, I would be, be I, I have no doubt there's going to be a yellow card and uh, on report for the bunker uh, for this match. And uh, he's just going to leave that to the bunker and take the, um, you know, take 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 the 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 the, the uh, the pressure off himself. No doubt about it. That's what's going to happen. So this this will be a game with a lot of penalties uh, as a result. This will be again in the rain, 16 degrees. This will be on a Friday night. Uh, yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty rainy conditions. It's been raining all week. And uh, yeah, we'll just see how they go in, in Paris. And the, the, the results within the two teams has been quite one side of England for the most part, uh, except for the autumn international game at Twickenham, where, again, England tried to manage this. It was really poor performance. Uh, pretty back and forward, but Argentina was able to snatch the win. Pretty, uh, a team that, you know, the, the Argentina in, in team, that, that was a very surprise win for Argentina in, in, in November last year because Argentina pretty much lost every other game in, in, the, tour, in, in, the, in, the, in the tour. And uh, yeah, this was, uh, again, England had every right to win this game, but they just try to manage the clock and cost themselves the game eventually. Argentina, um, their recent performances has been uh, on and off. Michael Checker has been doing a good job turning the team around, but it's still nowhere near the consistency that you want to see from the Argentinian side. Uh, they were, you know, w- you know, they found themselves some wins in recent times against the Wallabies, against the All Blacks last year, but the, I guess the biggest one you want to look at is their recent performances like performance against England, where they got dominated 27 points to, to 10. They were, again, last week, dominated by the All Blacks, uh, 44 points to 6. That was a very, very disappointing performance. The team did not show up uh, to play the second half at all. In, uh, the, the, the All Blacks just able to yeah, run away with the game quite easily. With the, uh, you know, Scotty Barrett didn't even bother returning to the field after getting a yellow card and just stayed off and had himself a bit of a bit of early shower. So yeah, let's have a look at the lineup and let's see what the uh, what the how the game is gonna gonna go. Uh, coming in at the the, the front rowers, we got Thomas Gaggio, Julian Montea, and uh, Francisco Cordella. The yeah the go to front rowers for the Argentinians now. And again, the biggest weakness in this in this front row is Thomas Gaggio. His scrummaging has been very very subpar. Something that I've talked about uh, in my reviews and previews in in the past. Uh, again, at some point, you know, Gajo is a really, really good ball carrier. I think he has one of the highest line breaks, a defender's beaten stats uh, in Rugby World Cup, in fact, for a, for, a, for a forward. And he is scrummaging, has consistently been penalized against throughout the Rugby World Cup. And that is something that when there will be a point where the coaches have to look at that and say, is that worth worth it to have every scrum go against you? For the benefit of somebody being able to run the ball, uh, really well off, uh, you know, uh, around the rocks, right? So that's a question I think the, the 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 management needs to look at seriously going into the next future. Obviously, it's a bit too late now to try to change that, uh, change that around. Uh, but once again, I think he's going to be under tremendous pressure. Ellis Genge gets the side number one jersey. Uh, Theo Dan finally gets a shot at the hooker. He was on the bench for both the quarterfinal and semifinal and didn't play at all. Uh, as a reserve, uh, but he's going to get a shot this weekend. Will Stewart comes in number three. Uh, Will Stewart has been the one that's, I thought, pretty good in terms of his set piece, but he has really struggled with his discipline, and I think that he's, yeah, he's, he's overall very clunky, so I think he will have a bit of ascendancy over Gajo in a scrummaging, but I do think that other aspect of this game needs to be improved to try to really get into that, uh, to, to try to get himself into that consistent start spot if he wants to. Uh, in the number four jersey, Guido Petty comes in for Argentina. Mauro Itoje gets the number four jersey uh, once again. Uh, Pedro Rubil- Rubiolo comes in at number five for Argentina. And Oli Chesum returns to number five jersey for England. Uh, in the loose forwards, Juan Martin Gonzalez for Argentina. Uh, he had a pretty pretty terrible game last week against the All Blacks. It felt like he was yeah, a little bit a little bit undercooked. You normally Pablo Matera will be at a six jersey. And uh, yeah, I don't. I mean, in big occasions, you know, sometimes you know these players lacking the experience. 
uh, yeah, they, they do get overwhelmed. And that we saw last week. Tom Curry gets moved to the blindside flanker position in number six as Sam Underhill returns to that open side flanker position for England. Underhill was not initially selected for the England 23, uh, but due to injuries, he wasn't recalled to the squad and he hasn't played at all throughout the tournament. And this is his first, uh, first start, in fact, first time selection for the England team at number seven jersey. Number eight, Marcos Crema for... Oh, sorry, number seven, Marcos Crema for Argentina. And number eight, Facunda Iza for Argentina. And Ben Earl, probably the best English forward in the Rugby World Cup this year. He's absolutely so good at carrying the ball, so good at defensively, and so good at the breakdown. Uh, I think, you know, he, he's definitely the player of the year for England uh, in my books. In the back line now, we've got Thomas Kubeli comes in number nine uh, up against Ben Youngs, the veteran, uh, a number nine for England. Ben Youngs hasn't been has been off the bench a lot. Uh, I think this is his start. I can't remember the last time he started for England. I don't think he started for England at all in the World Cup. He may, maybe, maybe I think he probably started in the warm-ups. But yeah, he gets his back in the starting in the number nine. Santiago Carreras uh, returns to the 10 jersey. Uh, now, he looked really good for the first 20 minutes or so against the All Blacks. Showed a lot of versatility. Showed a lot of uh, creativity as well with his, with his game. Lots of quick balls. And Argentina was actually getting a lot of front foot momentum against the All Blacks early on. But again, the pressure built and then mounted. Everybody's starting to fall apart a bit. He started rushing his kicks a little bit, rushing those passes a little bit, and just, yeah, really not controlling his nerves uh, when the pressure started to, to pile on him. Uh, Owen Farrell, we've already talked about 20 minutes about him. He's, uh, he's going to be captain. He's going to be number 10. He's going to prove to the world that uh, he's going to be, yeah, we'll have to see if, 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 if England indeed if he is indeed the number 10. Uh, anyway, let's move on. I don't, I don't want to talk about him anymore. Uh, Matteo Carreras comes in number 11 for Argentina. Henry Arundel returns to the number 11 jersey. He scored five tries against Chile. One of the yeah equal re- try scoring uh, for, for the England jersey. Really, really well done. Uh, number 12 is um, De La Fuenta for Argentina. Gero Nemo De La Fuenta for Argentina. And Malo Tuilangi returns at number 12 jersey. For that inside center position. Uh, again, Malo Tuilangi, really, really good for England when he's given the opportunity to crash the ball. But uh, yeah, they just don't do that, especially in the second half. He's like, he, I don't think he, he hardly touches the ball in the second half in most of these England performances. Uh, yes, yeah, really disappointing. Number 13, Lucio Senti for Argentina. Yeah, De La Fonte is interesting being, uh, being added at 12 jersey ahead of Choco Barris uh, as well. So Choco Barris has been quite, quite, you know, has been given quite a lot of opportunities for Argentina, number 12. Uh, so that's a one change there for Argentina. Number 13 for England, Joey Merchant, who has been always good for England. I, I think that, you know, he's very, very talented and I really do like to see him play uh, play rugby. Number 14, Emil- Emiliano Bofelli for Argentina, also the goal kicker on the win. One of the, you know, one of the really dangerous players, more dangerous players on the field. He's got really good ability to finish the ball and he's very good at a, a kicking game as well uh, with the boot. Freddie Stewart has been named at the number 14 jersey to make room for Marcus Smith at the number fullback position. Uh, in the rain, in the wet conditions, the winger pretty much plays uh, as a high ball recipient anyway. So it's not really uh, not really too out of out of position for Freddie Stewart to manage in the, in the number 14 jersey. And also, I do think that, you know, there was some talks about putting Freddie Stewart at center with, uh, what's his name? So Woodward has mentioned that. I'm good to see that Bothwick hasn't decided to do that quite yet, but uh, try and finish through it out at number 14. And finally, at number 15, Juan Cruz Malia gets that, um, gets that, you know, gets that, gets that fullback position once again for Argentina. And again, in the rain and under the high ball, it's going to be very, very tough for him. Marcus Smith gets number 15 jersey. His role will be more of a playmaker out of the fullback position with the kicking game. Uh, he will be moving up into the attacking line and uh, assist Owen Farrell in a lot of those quicker breakdown speed uh, attack options that the England would like to, to, to have this weekend as well. Uh, finally, in the, in the reserves now, we got Augustin Creevy, the, the veteran at, uh, what, 30, 30, 36 or 37 now, uh, will be coming off the bench in the, in the hooker position. Jamie George will be having an easy day coming off the bench, number 16. Joe Scalvi, number 17 for Argentina, and Idrajo. Idra, Idurado Bello comes in number 18 for Argentina. Uh, Bevan Rod gets his opportunity at the loose set at number 17 
I think this might be the first time he's named in the in the. I, I don't even know. If, I don't even know if he played against Chile to be honest. But yeah, this will be another opportunity for him to come off the bench. Dan Cole gets moved down to the bench from uh, a spectacular start actually last week against the Springboks, and yeah, the um, the other two four reserves now. Matias Alamano comes in number 19 for Argentina. David Ribbons, number 19 for England. Uh, number 20, Rodrigo Bruni for Argentina. And Lewis Lutnam will be for England. And number 21, Lotaro Bazanvelas will be the reserve uh, number nine for Argentina. Danny Kerr will be coming off the bench. Uh, another veteran for England at number 21 for the half of that position. And number 22, the veteran for Argentina, Nicolas Sanchez will be once again coming off the bench to make that impact play for Argentina. Last week, the game was already out of reach, too far out of reach for him to make any difference coming off the bench. So yeah, really disappointing. Uh, George Ford, hopefully he gets more than two minutes this week uh, against Argentina because that, I, I really think, felt that England lead or something to some more injection off the bench. Uh, it's, it's really surprising. Like, why would you have someone on the bench and not use them in, in 2023, the way that rugby is played nowadays. You really want everybody to have that full energy uh, finish off the game. Uh, but yeah, hopefully we get a bit more time for George Ford uh, this weekend. And finally, Matias Moroni comes in number 23 for Argentina and Oli Lawrence will be finishing up the team for England at number 23. My predictions for this game, I think uh, once again, because Owen Farrell is starting, I think England will take an early lead. Uh, let's say around the 50 meter mark, uh, Argentina will make a comeback and with Nicolas Sanchez coming off the bench uh, would we'll, we'll win the game for Argentina by two points. My predictions. Okay, let me know your thoughts. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, thanks for watching my videos and uh, thanks for my Patreon supporters, my YouTube membership mem uh, members, uh, people who donate money through Super Chats and um, yeah, and buy me coffee. I really do appreciate that. So yeah, thanks thanks for, for your heart and the money and um, yeah, let me know your thoughts, guys. Like, comment, subscribe. And um, see you guys later for the grand final preview. Have a good one. Cheers.